This is one of two videos I'm preparing critiquing Andrew Kleeman's value, price and profit theories along, and prepared them along with Alan Cottrell and Dave Zachariah. We'll start out by explaining what Kleeman's theory of value is. His theory divides time into discrete periods. He's vague as to whether that this period is a week, a month, a year or what have you. He then says that value is defined to be the number of hours direct labour performed in that period plus the past input costs of firms operating divided by the past melt which is a monetary expression of labour time. Um, the costs are taken to be what he terms temporal prices which equalise profit rates. Kleeman's melt itself is recursively defined. He says the melt is equal to the current price of the gross product divided by the value of the gross product. Now, the idea of the melt wasn't Kleeman's. Other economists had proposed it. But this particular interpretation of it is Kleeman's own, as we will see what happens when we expand the term value of the gross product. Value of the gross product itself then becomes recursively defined. It becomes total input labour, past input costs divided by past melt. So we have a recursive definition of the melt in terms of the melt. And in order to fix it, you need to know an initial melt and initial prices. So it's an incomplete formulation here. Problems with this is that Clemens' definition of value depends on price and does not match average labour time requirements in production, which is the way the, the concept of value has traditionally been understood by Marxist economists. He provides no way to determine an initial melt in a real capitalist economy. And without an initial value of the melt, all subsequent values are undefined. It also depends on profit equalising prices, with properties that we will show contradict the claims that Kleeman himself makes. Next, let's look at Kleeman's theory of the rate of profit. His profit rate theory says that the profit rate is set by the total aggregate surplus value in his notation here and aggregate toss, costs in his notation. We're going to ignore problems with the melt and assume it's somehow given. And all flow rates of profit in the economy simultaneously are assumed to equalise to this aggregate profit rate. So they all sectors are assumed to simultaneously get this aggregate rate. Then using equalising prices, Kleeman claims a that the profit rate is determined by aggregate surplus labour, b that profit rate can fall in the event of labour saving technical change, c that the profit rate depends on productivity in the luxury goods in sector. Now we're going to evaluate these by setting up a model. On the YouTube page for this video there will be a link to the computer code for the model so that people can check it themselves. But it's a simple economy using three commodities, steel, grain and sugar. All sectors use some steel and labour. Workers consume only grain and sugar is a luxury good. Now these correspond roughly to Department 1, 2A and 2B in Capital Volume 2. Now let's go through his claims one by one. Determination by surplus labour. Why is he talking about this? Well, he's directing it at Samuelson, who had previously shown that 
the profit rate can be predetermined without any reference to surplus labour if you assume profit equalising prices. Kleeman claims that this isn't true under his profit equalising temporal prices. So let's try simulating it and see what happens. In our graphs, we simulate the economy for a number of time steps. The red dashed line is the profit rate predicted by Kleeman. The black line is the profit rate that you would get. Sorry, the black line is Kleeman's. The red dashed line is the profit rate predicted by Sraffa's theory, and Samuelson was building on Sraffa. So, what do you see here? Profit rate is the same in Kleeman's maths as it would be in Sraffa's maths. So, he's not actually getting a different rate of profit from what Sraffa would predict. And given that in Sraffa's system, the profit rate is determined by material conditions, and since the trajectory of Kleeman's profit rate is identical to that of Sraffa, and since we know that the Sraffian one is determined by material conditions, then Kleeman's one must be determined by material conditions too, and thus surplus labour is equally redundant in Kleeman's model as it is in Sraffa's model. Now, suppose that at time period 10 we reduce the real wage by 5%. Immediately, in both Kleeman's and Sraffa's model, the rate of profit goes up. It goes up by the same amount in both cases. Again, it's determined by material conditions. Kleeman does not actually give you a different result from Sraffa. Given the same input data, the Sraffian model and the Kleeman model give exactly the same results. His, his next point about labour-saving technology is directed at, at the Japanese economist Okishio, who had shown that cost-saving labour, sorry, cost-reducing labour-saving technical change cannot systematically lower the rate of profit under profit equalising equilibrium prices. Kleeman claims that this isn't true <coughs> given his profit equalising temporal prices. Now let's test that by running a simulation. So, at period 10 productivity in the steel sector is doubled. The immediate effect in the Sraffian case is the rate of profit rises. In the Kleeman case it falls briefly and then rises to the same level as it would in the Sraffa case. He draws his conclusion by only looking one period ahead and not looking at what his model is going to do in the subsequent periods. If you follow his model through it ends up with the same rate of profit as you get in the Sraffian model. It just takes four time steps to reach it. So he doesn't end up predicting any different long-term effect from the Sraffian model. Since the trajectory of the profit rate is determined by material conditions, as in Sraffa, he's not giving a different result. And Okishio proved that cost-reducing cost labour-saving technical change in the basic sector will always raise the Sarafian profit rate. It will also raise the Kleeman profit rate after a few time steps. So Kleeman's profit rate will inexorably rise to a higher level, just as it would with Sarafian. He gives a misleading impression by only citing the first time period when it falls. Now let's consider the topic of productivity in the luxury goods sector. Sraffa showed that productivity in the luxury goods sector cannot systematically alter the profit rate under pr profit equalising equilibrium prices. Kleeman claims this isn't true under his 
profit equalizing temporal prices? Well, let's check. We run the model and at period 10 we double the productivity in the sugar sector. In Clayman's case you get a slight fall in the rate of profit. So immediately that disproves his um, if, he, if he works by his normal method that says uh, it's the wrong direction, it should move in the other direction. But even so it's only a one period blip it converges to the Serafian one and the Serafian result holds. Aggregate profit rate is unaffected by productivity in the luxury goods sector. Now, instead of that, let's reduce the organic composition of capital in the luxury goods sector by reducing steel usage. Well, Kleeman is able to show for one short time step that you get a rise in the rate of profit. But that's a, a temporary blip. The thing soon tracks back onto the Serafian tendency. So we don't know what he assumes his time periods to be. With the, at some points it's clear he assumes the time periods are a month. Other points he may be assuming a year. But it's a very short term effect. Uh, that he deviates his deviation from the, the long-term Serafian trend. Consequently, Clemens' profit rate can never systematically change due to changes in the luxury goods industry. The problems with Clemens' profit rate theory is that none of his central claims are true. We've shown that he gets exactly the same profit rate as you get in the Serafian theory, in which aggregate surplus labour does not enter. So aggregate surplus labour cannot be a crucial factor in such a theory. Um, we've shown that, the, that his claim that the profit rate can fall by labour saving technical change is an illusion. It's only in the very first time step of his simulation that it falls in subsequent time steps it rises and we have shown that the profit rate even in his system doesn't depend on the productivity in the luxury goods sector none of his claims are valid because the trajectory of, of his profit rate is determined by material conditions just as it is with Srafa and his profit rate tends towards the Srafian rate OK, now let's look at his theory of prices. <coughs> Basically, he says that the current prices in the economy are set by past costs in money terms um, multiplied by an equalised profit rate. And we again ignore um, problems with Clemens melt. But there are general problems with any theory like Clemens or Samuelson's and other bourgeois critics of the labour theory of value which assume a simultaneous equalisation of the rate of profit. The problems are is that in fact profit rates don't equalise. There's actually a wide dispersion of profit rates. Secondly, the profit rates are inversely related to capital intensity. And thirdly, when you run the simulations with the same data, you find that Kleeman's temporal prices are determined by Sraffa's equilibrium prices. He doesn't actually end up with a different set of prices after the first couple of time steps. They converge. Let's look at this point about the wide dispersion rate. This is a little complicated to understand, but this shows the how the probability density functions for the that's that's what PDF prob probability density function stands for what the probability density functions are for the rate of profit in solid line and rate of surplus value in the British economy now 
they're wavy and wiggly and in neither case is there a uniform value given but what we find is that the spread of the profit rate is actually wider if you measure it in terms of its coefficient of variation which is the standard deviation over the mean the coefficient of variation of the profit rate is greater than the coefficient of variation of the profit share you would expect the coefficient of the profit share to be narrower according to Kleeman's theory, according to Samuelson's theory, according to Sraffa's theory. The profit share is supposed to have a, a single narrow distribution. Sorry, the profit rate is supposed to have a single narrow distribution. And in consequence, the apparent profit share, that is to say the ratio of surplus value to surplus value plus variable capital, should have a wider distribution. It actually has a narrower distribution. Like Samuelson, Kleeman assumes that the rate of return on capital in, the, in industries with a high organic composition is the same as that in industries with a low organic composition. This is absolutely central to his theory. But as a matter of fact, the rate of return is systematically lower in industries with a high organic composition. And only the labour theory of value can explain this observation. Here is uh, data from Sweden that Dave Zachariah has collected. The x-axis is the capital to wage ratio, the y-axis is the profit rate. Now it's clear that they fall on a declining trend. If you take the formula for the rate of profit just given in volume one of capital in which there's no process of transformation taking place at all this is the predicted rate of profit you'd get this is the trend line you'd get and you can see that is actually the trend line the data follow the, fo the data follows the trend line given by volume one of capital Kleeman tries to rescue the transformation process in volume three of capital. Now the transformation process in volume three of capital predicts this flat distribution here. This is what the rate should be in Sweden according to volume three of capital and according to Kleeman. It should be clustered along the dotted line. Clearly it isn't. It's clustered along the solid line. It is low in high organic composition of capital industries and the rate of profit is high in low organic composition of capital industries. Directly the opposite of what Kleeman assumes. And Kleeman's own prices closely track Sraffian ones. <coughs> Again, we've got the three goods in our economy. We track the prices. The black line is Kleeman prices. The red line are Sraffian simultaneous prices which Kleeman denigrates. But if we simulate the economy over 20 time periods and at point 10 we introduce a technical change, we see that the two models give exactly the same results apart from a one period lag on the price of sugar and a one period lag on the price of steel when we shift from one technique to another. So the end results are the same prices. The trajectory of his prices is determined by material conditions as it is with Sraffa. Kleeman's objections to the Sraffian materialist approach are completely undermined. He gets the same results. <coughs>